Elon Musk made it clear when he bought Twitter last Friday that big changes were coming. Elon Musk, Twitter's recently appointed owner, chairman, and CEO claims he wants to make it possible for anybody to become verified on the service for a monthly subscription in exchange for the ability to publish lengthier messages and videos and to see fewer adverts. And that's not all. Elon Musk may bring back Vine, the Twitter-owned short-form video platform that was purchased before being shut down. So, how much does Musk want to charge for the monthly subscription? And how does he plan to revive Vine? Welcome to the Tesla News Hangout. Today, we are going to look at why and how Elon Musk intends to enroll in paid Twitter verification and revive Vine. So, stay tuned as we look into this. Elon Musk, a millionaire entrepreneur, has only begun his first week as the owner of the social media network Twitter, and he is already considering big enhancements for the platform. On the other hand, he is also faced with considerable challenges. According to a corporate document made to the Securities and Exchange Commission on Monday, Twitter's new owner reportedly fired all of the board members of the board of directors and appointed himself as the lone member of the board to take their place. Later on, Musk said in a tweet that the new board structure is temporary, although he did not provide any other insight about this assertion. In addition, he is testing out the concept of charging consumers for the authentication process. But how much would individuals be willing to pay for the blue checkmark that Twitter has traditionally used to verify higher profile accounts so that other users know it's really them when they log in? Well, this question was put in a poll that a venture capitalist who collaborates with Musk tweeted about. The response that came from Musk's verified account was interesting. Critics have ridiculed the mark as an exclusive status symbol since it is regularly awarded to high-profile individuals such as journalists, politicians, business people, and celebrities. However, Twitter also uses the blue check mark as an additional weapon to combat disinformation from accounts impersonating individuals. This is accomplished by validating activists, people who unexpectedly find themselves in the news, and obscure journalists at relatively small magazines worldwide. Earlier this week, in response to a user who tweeted asking for help with the verification process, Musk stated that the entire verification process is now being overhauled. Also, on Friday, a rich Saudi man named Prince Al-Walid bin Talal and his corporation, Kingdom Holding Company, rolled over a combined $1.89 billion in Twitter shares. As a result, they became the company's second largest stockholders, behind only Musk. Concern was voiced by a few legislators, most notably the Democratic senator from Connecticut, Chris Murphy, in response to the revelation. Murphy stated in a tweet that he has requested that the Committee on Foreign Stake, which evaluates the purchases made by foreign purchasers of American companies, investigate the potential national security ramifications of the kingdom's investment in Twitter. Murphy contends that America should be concerned about the Saudis' position as the second largest owners of a significant social media site because they have a clear interest in stifling political discourse and impacting American politics. He makes this argument based on the fact that the Saudis have a manifest interest in both of these things. But back to Musk, after gaining control of the social networking platform, Musk reached out to several investors and contacts from the technology industry to enlist their assistance in remaking the firm, which will most likely include making adjustments to the company's workforce. Last week, CEO Parag Agrawal and several other top executives were terminated from their positions by Musk. It has not been made clear if he will start making more big layoffs or when he will start doing so. But Matthew Faulkner, an associate professor of finance at San Jose State University, believes there will be many staff layoffs. Faulkner highlighted the need for cost reductions in the wake of Musk's pricey acquisition of Twitter and the platform's continued struggles to turn a profit. Musk may want to fast weed out staff members who don't support his goal to provide those who do support it a sense of stability. But if we're being sincere, the last thing you want is for your employees to be in a state of panic. It doesn't help at all. According to Calacanis, the team has already established a comprehensive plan to reduce the number of bots, spammers, and other undesirable actors on the site and increase the exposure of these undesirable individuals. In addition, he conducted a survey among Twitter users to determine whether they would be ready to pay between $5 and $15 per month to be verified and earn a blue checkmark on Twitter. But everything considered, Musk has made a lot of remarks on how to enhance Twitter since the beginning of the year, but it is yet certain which proposals he will give priority to. However, late last week, he warned that any significant decisions on the content or the reinstatement of banned accounts would not be made until a content moderation committee with various perspectives is in place. He has pledged to relax some of Twitter's content limitations to support free expression. Later, he clarified his comment by stating that everyone who had been suspended for trivial or spurious grounds would be released from Twitter jail. 
But why did a crypto firm back Musk's acquisition of Twitter? Well, the CEO of a cryptocurrency exchange that contributed $500 million to Musk's acquisition of Twitter, said there were several reasons why the deal had his support. These reasons included the possibility that Musk would convert Twitter into a company that supported cryptocurrencies and the idea of Web3, which many cryptocurrency enthusiasts believe will usher in the next generation of the internet. On Monday, the CEO of Binance, Changpeng Zhao, gave an interview with CNBC in which he indicated that the business is working to ensure that cryptocurrencies have a voice in topics of free expression. In addition, among other efforts with a more strategic focus, they wish to provide a hand in incorporating Twitter into Web3 once it is completed. He stated that some of Musk's present issues, such as the proposal to charge a premium membership fee for extra individuals, may be remedied with the assistance of cryptocurrencies. And among these issues was the proposal to charge a price for premium membership. And in his opinion, doing so on a global scale is not too difficult to accomplish when employing cryptocurrency as a means of payment because it is quite straightforward. So, soon after purchasing the firm, Elon Musk made several substantial changes at Twitter, including what seems to be the termination of crucial staff and the modification of important Twitter features like platform verification. But still, reports claim that Musk has also requested that the developers working for Twitter look into the previous code for Vine to evaluate whether or not the social media application will ever be returned. Vine was a popular platform for short videos in 2013, and it allowed users to produce video clips that were only 6 seconds long and looped indefinitely. For those who aren't familiar with it, let us explain. One of the early platforms to enable short-form videos, Vine is acknowledged for providing inspiration for several apps that followed in its footsteps, including TikTok and the Reels feature on Instagram. Elon Musk conducted a Twitter survey to determine his followers' opinions on the possible revival of Vine on October 31, 2022. More than two-thirds of users who participated in the poll and cast more than 4 million ballots decided that the program should be brought back to life. And it should come as no surprise that Musk is also targeting TikTok with this initiative. He has already asked his followers for advice on how they might be more successful than TikTok. On the other side, Twitter has just introduced a new section of its website called Suggested Videos, which has its own original short films. The most recent addition to the platform has a full screen, vertically scrolling interface, similar to many other platforms available today. According to a story published by The Verge, Elon Musk's team has reportedly instructed Twitter engineers to locate old Vine code and investigate the possibility of reviving the service. According to information provided by yet another Axios source, the next iteration of Vine may be live as early as the end of the year, which is less than two months away. However, the idea is not universally well received. A former product director at Twitter named Sarah Bakepour recently pointed out in a tweet that a portion of the code in the Vine app is now over 10 years old, which may make it inappropriate to use in the year 2022. Vine would be entering a whole new video sector if it were to make a comeback, starting from where it left off in 2016. There is a great deal of competition in the global market because of platforms like TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Reels on Instagram. So, what do you think about paying for verification? And do you think Vine will be able to compete with platforms such as TikTok? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below, and do not forget to subscribe to our channel Tesla News Hangout, where we talk about Elon Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX. While you're at it, hit the bell so you never miss any of our videos, as more exciting ones like this are on the way. I'll see you at the next one. Um, so this, but this is, this doesn't seem right, because um, we've made no change in our operations at all.